hello everyone so today's session is on introduction to sap system and overview of sap erp so let's understand the term erp so erp stands for enterprise resource planning so what is enterprise uh, enterprise means a company any company like manufacturing pharma telecom real estate okay any company we can call as a enterprise and as we know to run the business so any company required different resources that is material machine people money okay so all all those things like human material financial etc all those are known as a resource to the company right and to run the business in a proper way we required we required some tool okay which can do the proper planning so that we can manage all the resources in a efficient way right so the erp so the erp system are kind of software tools which are used to manage the data of data to manage and plan the data of the organization of the company in any company we know there are different departments like purchasing finance sales crm etc okay and in the big company we required a tight integration between all the departments okay so the software which are developed to manage all the operations of a company including all the departments all the resources so those type of software are called as a erp software so let's try to understand like what are the advantage of using a erp system okay by taking a simple scenario so here take a scenario like a customer calls and place a order for a car okay and as we know all the customers inquiry order quotations are handled by the sales department so a company may have the sales at a different place the purchasing department working from a different location the production planning department working from other state other city etc so all the departments can be located at a different place now once the sales department okay they receive the they got a call from the customer for one order of a car so once they enter the order in the system so with the help of erp system they can check in the software whether the inventory is available for that product or not from any location they can check the stock availability and in case suppose if the there is no stock there is no inventory is available so they can cross check whether that product is currently is on the production floor is there any like production is going on for that particular product and here also suppose there is no inventory there is no production is going on so there is a concept called mrp material requirements and planning so for the any product if there is no inventory there is no production is going on so through the mrp the system generate the requirement for all the raw material or the finished good product which are required to manufacture that end product okay so the purchasing department they place the order to the vendors and once the production department get all the raw material and the finished good material uh, semi semi finished material so they manufacture that car okay after that the final product we can see in the inventory and then the sales department can deliver that product to the customer so this is all this all works in a integration way okay even if they are working from a different location but because they are using the erp software the so erp use the centralized database 
This means that if the sales department is placing an order from any location, so based on that, the inventory can be checked. Based on that, the production planning can be run. Based on that, the raw material purchasing can be done. So this is the advantage of using an ERP system. So here we can see, like a organization, there are different department purchasing, finance, human resource, okay, service, CRM, but they all use a centralized database system. So even if the CRM is placing the order, okay, so the purchasing can track the details. Fine. After the sales or service, the finance department can check the payment of the customer. They can check the payment of the vendor for the purchase goods. So this is the advantage of using the ERP. Like all the business process across the company, we can manage through the single software. So because of the centralized database system, so all departments, sales, finance, purchase, etc., they can see the information real time. In the same scenario, in case if they're not using if they are not using the centralized software, if they're not using the ERP software, and instead of that, take example for the sales, they're using some other software. For production, they're using some other software. Purchasing department is using some other SCM. So what will happen, even the sales team is entering the order, they will not able to see the inventory because they don't have the access. The purchasing department will never know what are the material they have to procure because they don't have the real-time access of the data unless this is communicated through some other channel. Okay, so because of decentralized system, there can be a huge communication gap which will like, which will reduce the company performance. So for any big organization to work in a proper manner, they use a ERP software which uses a centralized database system. So what are the advantage of using the centralized database system? Like we can see the real-time data availability, uh, efficient way of communication. We can do the quick decision making. We can do the proper supervisation and control. And easily we can plan and execute our business requirement. So those are the advantages of using a centralized database system. Now let's see what are the different ERP software available in the market. So there are many ERP vendors out there, like Oracle ERP, then Microsoft Dynamics, then Infor, then Tally ERP. Okay, but the very popular and the very successful ERP software in the world is SAP ERP. Okay, SAP is the largest business software company in the world. Almost 80% of the Fortune 1000 companies uses SAP. They have like 3 lakh plus customers. They are running on SAP software in over 180 countries. So very powerful software. This is called a business software. Okay, so in the business software, SAP is a leading provider. So let's see some detail of this SAP product. So here SAP stands for System Application and Product in Data Processing. As I explained, SAP is a market leader in the ERP software. The SAP is developed by German-based company SAP AG, which is founded in 1972 by the five former IBM employees. Okay. So initially, uh, they released the first the product that is with the R. Okay. So okay, let's see here. So in 1972, they founded the company. Then they initially come up with a small solution that is R. Here R stands for real time. Okay. Their intention was to create a software which will provide the real time business processing. Okay. So first, like they come up with the R1, R2, but first two are we can say it is not success. Okay, so biggest success in the SAP history when they launched 
SAP R3. What is R3? I will explain. That is a client server based architecture. And after some addition in 1999 to 2004, they renamed as, as the SAP ECC. So this is the success product of SAP. With this product, they capture almost 60 70 percent of the ERP market. So here, what is three tier architecture? So in the three tier architecture, there is a database layer, a application server, and a client tier. This is our we can consider as a laptop, okay, through which we are accessing the database, and in between to perform any logic, there is a application server. That architecture will learn at a later stage. Okay, so after that ECC product, after that the next successful product of the SAP is in 2015, which is still going on. That is S for HANA. So what is different between the ECC and S for HANA? I will explain later. So this is the journey of SAP product till now. So now let's see. Which type of industry are using the SAP? So SAP is used almost by all the small and the big companies. In more than 28 different industry sectors, the SAP is used worldwide. So one example is like manufacturing company. They use the SAP to manage their, all the operations. Then we have the like pharmaceutical company. Then next, the automotive industry. Then we have the aerospace. Like this, there are many industries where SAP is very easy to use and it is running successfully. Fine. So what are the advantages of using SAP? Why it is a big success? The main advantage, SAP is suitable for any size of business, whether it is a small business, large scale, any size of company, they can run that business on the SAP software. The second advantage, easy to integrate with any third party software or other company SAP. Take example, we are working in a company and we have one vendor who is also using the SAP software. So we can directly integrate our SAP system with their system. Okay. So through which the transfer of data, transfer of document, we can do in a very easy way, in a secure way. Second, take example, one company along with the SAP, they're using Salesforce. We know the Salesforce, Salesforce is the number one CRM in the world. But this is not the ERP. Because Salesforce is used only to manage the CRM related activity. So what some company is doing, on top of SAP system to manage their CRM activity, they use the Salesforce. So here we need some kind of integration, right? So this integration is easily possible in the SAP software. Next, like industry best practice, so SAP with their like highly qualified team, so based on the some industries, they're making some best practices how the business should work in manufacturing, how the business process should work in a pharmaceutical company. They're so making some best practice document. So which make it is easy to customize to meet the business requirement. Along with that, we have a high level data security. And if you use in a proper way, we can reduce the cost. We can reduce the cost by using the SAP software. And the main advantage is a continuous innovation. So on the back end, SAP teams, every quarter, every six months, okay, they bring up some new upgrades. They continue, continuously, they're doing some kind of innovation, some kind of upgradation in the system. So all these are the advantage of using the SAP software. Now, if you look at the disadvantage, the cost. The cost of SAP is very, very high. If one company want to implement SAP, they need to purchase the license, they need to purchase the hardware, they need to hire the implementation company, then the high salary for the consultant. And sometimes for the big companies, the implementation become very complex. So 
because of the small disadvantage of the SAP system. Now the important topic, let's see, as a consultant, okay, what are the different career options in the SAP ERP? So we can divide the SAP modules into two parts. One is functional and second is technical. Suppose as a beginner, you want to get entry into the SAP software. Okay, but you're not interested in the technical model. You don't want to do programming. You don't want to do the administrative work. So what we can do, in case, you can choose one of, one of the functional model, like finance. So in the finance, we can manage all the finance related processes. If you're interested in the sales and distribution, okay, then the, with a the small knowledge in the sales side, we can configure the sales business process in the SAP system. If you are interested in the material management, okay, like vendor coordination, okay, like material management, all, then material management is one module. Like this, there are different models, human resource. So if you're not interested going to the programming model, but you still want to become a SAP consultant, then we can go for the functional models. Second is a technical. Now take example, you want to become a programmer. Okay, so in SAP, there's a ABAP programming language through which we can do the SAP related programming. So even if you're fresher, you can directly learn the ABAP to become the <coughs> SAP programmer. Other side, one more technical module is there that is called as a basis. See, ABAP is responsible to develop the SAP program, to develop the SAP application. Okay, whereas the basis team is responsible for all the administrative work, like installation of the software, taking backup of the software, okay, like control, controlling the authorization control, taking care of upgrade and all. So all this come in the administrator part, fine? So, like in this two way, the SAP modules are divided. So, this was the like higher level overview of the SAP system. Like what is SAP and what is ERP? What are the different modules? Okay. So, in our next session, I will try to explain some more details to all the ABAP site and the ECC versus the HANA product of SAP system. Thank you.